All right, my friends, today I'm gonna to be showing you how to install these LS2 coils onto your Commodore. Well, it's not as simple as it may sound, but I've got the stuff to do it, and a lot of you have been asking, so let's do it. Okay, so a lot of you know about the LS coil driver, um, thanks to the guys at PCMHacking.net. Uh, awesome little job, it's a basically a box that converts the DFI output into a logic based output which is what you need to fire an LS coil. So if you've seen my LS coil on the Subaru factory ECU setup, I went into detail a fair bit about what it takes to get it to fire etc. So essentially when it sees um, 5 volts the coil will power up or dwell um, and then when that 5 volts goes low, so it drops off, it will fire the spar. Um, in a nutshell. Yeah, essentially they've made it really easy with this box. Um, I'll show you over here. This is it. A really nice polished package. So, basically we've got all our signals in and our six coils out. Um, and then we've got a little button for rev limit and for two step. So the really cool thing that I'm actually really looking forward to and have been for a while with this is you can do a random spark cut rev limiter or two step, which is like the classic ones with all the pops and bangs and crackles. Really fast, because as you know, the Commodore limiter from well, from factory to fuel cut, on this it's been changed to a soft cut uh, ignition retard. But it's still kind of slow and I've had a, actually had guys asking how they can make it faster. The short answer is there's nothing you can do. But with this, I should be able to do a nice fast cut and it'll sound awesome and crackle and pop and shoot flames and all that cool stuff. But the main thing is, if you remember it's been so long ago now, but the last street tuning we did on this before I went to my whole new turbo setup, which of course you can check out in another video. I've just done a full hectic custom manifold, new turbo, heaps of cool stuff. Uh, we were running out of spark essentially at about 15, 16 pound of boost. I think your plug gap's too big. It's breaking up there. What's your gap sensor? 0.8. So I had to gap the plugs down to like 0.75 mil just to get decent spark. Well, enough for it not to break up. So what happens with high cylinder pressures? If the spark isn't strong enough, it's going to blow the spark out as it basically you know, sparks between the electrode, um, which obviously will result in a misfire, um, which doesn't make power and it feels shit. This will essentially enable us to, we could almost go back to a factory like, or probably easily go back to a one mil gap, which is better for fuel economy and a nicer idle. I've heard a lot of guys who have put these on already have instantly noticed the idle was like really good. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna ex try explaining as much as I can when I go along. So my plan is, uh, I've still got to mount them all up and all that stuff. So once I finish shooting this intro, I'm going to go and do that. Then I'll get onto the wiring. It's pretty, pretty straightforward, but I'm going to do it really properly. So nothing is burnt. I've already changed this. Um, so yeah, this is the factory, well, the MSD factory replacement coils. DFI is under it, as I'm sure a lot of you know. It's got this connector. I've had to move all this stuff because it used to route across across there and that got burnt. I had to repair it and then you know, I've had nothing but problems. There's something fucked up in this wiring. I just haven't had a chance to to sort it. So what I'm going to do is essentially these coils go. DFI I'm going to mount inside the air box here. I've got a donor loom over there which I'll show you. I'm going to take all the new fresh wiring, run a whole new DFI plug, run um, some new shielded cable 
to the crank angle sensor. So the two signal wires, it's got two signals, a power and a ground. They all go to the DFI connector. Um, so I'm gonna run a new shielded cable, all new wiring, and I'm gonna get what I can out of the other loom that I have. And it's essentially all just gonna route along here. The harness will split, go to the three coils over on this side, three coils here. I have to make some custom spark plug leads, which you probably saw me do in the Subaru LS coil thing. I'll give you a quick rundown on that. Um, and yeah, everything must be along the engine and around the back, all the way from the heat. It will be properly wrapped, crimped properly, and all that. So I've also picked up some um, Eagle 10, I think they're 10 mil, um, LS spark plug leads. So these will work okay on the passenger side. The driver's side, I need to make them a little bit longer, so I'm actually going to use some of my existing uh, Top Gun 10mm leads. I'm going to use this 90 degree end on the spark plug. As you can see, I've got these boots. I'm going to make up as much heat shielding as I can because they're in a real heat infested place. And then I'm going to crimp my new LS uh, MSD terminals. That's them if you're interested. Same ones I used for the Subaru loom I did. Um, and yeah, I've got the LS coil connectors for my loom that I make up. Obviously the coils, I've had these for ages. I've had you know, the coil driver for ages. It's just, as you know, it's just a matter of, well for me anyway, and a lot of my mates, it's just a matter of finding the time. It's just, especially because this car's a daily. So anyway, stop fucking blubbering on and I'm gonna get onto this. So I'll see you in a bit when it's time for wiring. All right, so a day has gone by. Coils are mounted, DFI is mounted. Pretty much ready to get onto some wiring. Uh, so there's a little bit to tidy up. Mine will be different to yours because I've already kind of customed it because it got burnt and I had to fix it up. Um, it wasn't ideal, but I'll show you the coils and what the next step is. All right, so here you can see the driver's side. So. I had these, I welded these bars onto the valve cover ages ago in anticipation for this, which I finally got around to. So I'll chuck a photo on the screen how they work. I was actually hoping to fit them underneath and kind of sandwich the coil, but I couldn't get it under there with the nut so I had to change plan. But essentially it's just an aluminium bracket with probably a, I don't know, 12 mil bit of aluminium tube as a stand up and they're pretty, pretty well solid. So these LS ignition leads will work fine here. I'll just obviously heat boot them and all that. They're ready to go. Then over here, this is the one that took most of the, most of the time and effort. So as you can see, I've done these custom brackets. Um, that pretty much bolt through the fuel rail, bolt. The whole thing is super solid. Um, got some stainless rod, um, welded the nut on this side, and then I've got a, a lock nut and tapped a thread on the other side, and then these are just equally spaced with bits of aluminium tube as well. So they're all good to go, so I've got three custom leads to make for this one, which I'll show you guys when I get around to it. But for now, it's time to tidy up this wiring. So this is, I've just put plugs on them all because they all basically got like melted. Um, so what I'm gonna do is essentially run a whole new loom. So as you can see, I've kind of, taken my donor loom, this is the DFI plug, split it all apart and I can see where everything's running and what I'm going to take, so a little bit of work, but it will make sense soon. And you can see I've mounted the DFI in the airbox here, bolted through there, so the DFI plug will now be coming to here. Um, so basically route from the crank angle sensor along here, around, down into here. This will then feed a signal to the LS box which will be in the glove box or under there, kick panel. And then that loom will come out across here and feed these three coils and those three coils, essentially. Well, um, whenever you're doing wiring, I guess you can, you know, you can guesstimate how long it'll take then I'd say times it by four. This is where I'm at. I've been sorting through everything. 
Um, I just figured out what everything is. I've got everything sorted here, cut off. And you had DFI in there, DFI plug. Um, so all these ones go back into the ECU, so they'll connect back up to this loom here. And these four are for the crank angle sensor and the sensor power and ground. So there's two blue ones, three and 18 times on the um, trigger wheel. They're gonna be with my new shielded cable, so they'll run back across and around here. Um, and it's basically taco, I've got to get that back in. Um, and the main power source, which will kind of go back around there. So we're pretty much at the point where I can crimp all these back together, wrap the looms up, all that stuff. You can see here, this loom has turned into not much at all, really. I've got everything kind of laid out here. So you know, we've got um, coolant temp, it's a ground which will be extended. We've got these three wires which go to the ECU. Um, we've got basically the injectors and the uh, manifold temp sensor wiring. So that will be kind of extended on as well. We've got another grounding point. I think that's ECU grounds. Um, got knock sensor. Got another two cables that go to the ECU. And then this fat round one as well. So that's all I need to extend and keep the same colour throughout the whole the whole loom. So essentially they will be going um, from these along here and back onto these. So I don't need the whole length but you know I might as well use it, keep the colours going. Uh, and yeah, and also the injectors will now be, I'm gonna use the injector loom from the other harness because it's a lot easier. So I'll cut these off. Um, obviously the powers, yeah, things are changing direction. So anyway, I'm gonna get them all joined up, tidied up and routed nicely. So when you see me next, it will be the actual time to install the new LS stuff. Uh, this is gonna take probably another half a day because I'm gonna make up another loom. I'm gonna do crimp six plugs on. I've got to also make up three um, spark plug leads. I was kind of hoping to have this done today, but um, you, know, you can't rush these kind of things, it's pretty important, so. <sighs> Less time to work on the surf, that's it. Anyway, let's keep going. All right, so while I'm on this, I thought I'd just show you something real quick before I overlook it when I get to the proper install. As you can see, I've popped this grommet out um, that can be done by kind of reaching in under the glove box and you can, there's a couple of prongs and you can uh, push them in and then push it out of the firewall. So what I've done is I've drilled a couple of 10 mil holes through the grommet. Now be very careful not to hit the cables that are already going through there. And then I've poked um, two lengths of seven core trailer wire through. So this one is going to be for the um, LS coils. So that's the output from the module. I'm gonna put a six pin Deutsch connector on that and then pick up my new harness, which will plug into that. So that's to feed the coils. And I've got another one coming down, which will run through to the DFI. So this will give the three output signals from each um, bank of coils. That will go into the driver. And I might even use this for the 12 volt and ground signal I'll just use the 12 volt that's for the DFI as well, maybe. Um, but yeah, regardless, I've got seven cores coming out, so I can use them for other things later on too, which is always handy when you've got things coming through the firewall. All right, so before I go too far, I'll just show you guys the extra cables that I've basically run in. So as you can see, appearing in the loom here is the DFI's power. So it goes around down to here. Um, I've also got a LS um, driver ground, so that comes out of the seven core wire, as you saw. Um, the LS driver also takes its power from um, the DFI power. So that is somewhere in the loom here. And I've also got the uh, DFI ground. So what I'm gonna do is basically have a ring terminal on there, 
which uh, if you don't know the DFI ground through its body so basically above this this plug I'll have a ring terminal here which will go around and that joins into the ground circuit which goes to um, this stud here normally with these as you can see I've also added another ground for the um, the coils high power side ground so that will ground onto that stud as well and then it comes out here in the loom where I'll have a separate um, probably two or four pin Deutsch connector just for the power side of the coils and you can see the coil power as well so I guess while I'm at this I may as well show you guys um, the way that I'm joining these wires and you know, essentially the most correct way to do so uh, but you've got to have the right gear and obviously the right know-how so I'm by no means a wiring loom expert I have done enough of it to know what's right and wrong this is what I do I'm sure other people do it differently, but yeah, along these lines is right. For my joins, I, I've, uh, I used to solder, but now I've gone purely to crimping. So what I do is I take, depending on the size of the cable, these are for the bigger stuff, I take this and cut the spade off, which leaves me with that, as you can see, then lay the wires next to each other and then crimp it together, and then a bit of a good quality um, heat shrink over the top of that. So this stuff is the, I think it's um, multi-layer and it has glue inside, which is also good for the strength of the, the joint. So the correct crimpers for these are the ones as you can see here with this special shape in the jaw. These are the ones that I use. They're expensive, but they're really good. So they've got interchangeable jaws. Um, and they can do several types of crimps, mainly the ones for these little terminals. Oh my fucking god. It's done. Two days. That is a shitload of cutting, crimping, but all that is rectified. It's all, you know, spick and span now. So, I'll give you guys a quick look and then we'll move on to actually doing some LS core wiring, finally. Alright, so here we are. The old alternator's back in. It's a bit of a sh shame about that bit there, but I can't really do anything with that. Um, as you can see, all the grounds, I've got a nice... Um, got my nice shielded crank angle sensor signal cable and my um, power and ground. All in this nice kind of nylon mesh which is very nice uh, and it all goes along here along the back there then it will kind of all push back where my catch can goes um, obviously I'm still doing some wiring here so once I'm done I'll push that grommet all the way back but now time to do what I'm going to do anyway is the signal wires for the LS coils so if you remember before, this is my coil power and coil ground. And this is the five volt signal from the LS coil driver. And there's also the signal ground, I think, which goes back to the ECU's ground. So essentially with these, there's two grounds. There's the high current ground and then there's the signal ground. So the five volt ground. So yeah, what I'm gonna do is I've got a, a four pin Deutsch connector these are my favourite, I love these things. And a six pin, so this one will do all the coils. And this one will do the power, high current ground, and signal ground. So, I'm going to get onto that, and then I guess we'll tidy up this section at the DFI, and then we'll get onto some actual harness work. So, I'll show you guys how to crimp these. So, start off by probably taking 5mm of insulation off. This is where your special crimpers come in. So, find the right size jaw. For these, it's about a 3.1mm. See there, get that sat in there. So you want to crimp the wire 
uh, in the first crimp and then the second one is for the actual um, insulation. Push that in, squeeze down nice and tight. As you can see, and the second prongs, sometimes you have to fold them in a little bit. And the same thing, yeah. Except this one crimps onto the insulation, so. There you go. And that is a good solid crimp. So with these Deutsch connectors, you crimp them all on. Uh, obviously make sure you crimp the right gender terminal on there and then you just push them through the back as you'll see in the time lapse as I finish these off. Six coil signals, so one, two, three on the top, four, five, six on the bottom, and then this is the power. So the top two, the red and the black, that is the main power and the main ground, and this little black one underneath is the signal ground which goes back to the ECU. So that's that done. We can now mock up a loom. I'm seriously running on empty and losing enthusiasm, but it's gonna keep going.